Welcome to Mental Stillness. My name is Derek and I am excited that somehow you stumbled across this podcast. Welcome to episode six of Mental Stillness. Before we jump into this podcast, I wanted to say thank you. I've received quite a bit of messages on the impact of some of the content discussed in this podcast. It's super encouraging to know that you're listening, that the topics I'm bringing up, talking about are resonating. And so I would just love to invite you to continue to reach out. It helps me understand more of what you're going through and, and maybe some future topic ideas. And then also if on whatever platform you're listening to, if you could subscribe, give a rating, or even leave a review, that goes a long way with the search. So as people are searching mental health and leadership, subscriptions and, and ratings definitely help bring it to the top of the search. So thanks again for listening. Please share it with your friends, and let's jump into today's conversation on being a sensitive leader. If you go back and look at the logo for this podcast, you'll see a picture of me smiling. And one of the things that stands out to me the most is I'm not showing my teeth. And I get it. Some people, that's the way they smile, and that's that's great. That's something that I've done for a long time. Because when I was younger and I was getting my adult teeth, my two front teeth were adult teeth. They were enormous. Almost as if they were injected with like human growth hormone or they decided to have a growth spurt long before the rest of my body decided to have a growth spurt. Like they were years ahead of where the rest of my body was. So as a kid, I had braces. I had this contraption in my mouth called the spider bridge and had a key and you had to turn it. And I just remember thinking like, this is very medieval. Are we not past having to have this giant contraption in my mouth? So I spent all that time, my family spent all that money on getting my teeth fixed. And then shortly after getting my braces off, I'm playing in a high school basketball game and get elbowed right in those front two teeth. It ended up killing those two teeth, had to have multiple root canals. And there's a part of me that it was a very fitting end for my relationship with these teeth. All the embarrassment that was put upon me because of these monstrous teeth, those teeth were killed. I always wondered if the person who elbowed me still thinks about me today because I'm sure they have a pretty decent sized scar. All thanks to my buck teeth. There are a lot of people who would classify themselves as being sensitive. So what I want to do is first talk about what it means to be a sensitive person and then, how does that impact our leadership? So what makes a sensitive person? So a sensitive person is someone that they can get overwhelmed, they can get overstimulated, and they can also be keenly aware of how actions impact other people. But they can also notice details. When they walk in a room, they pick up on things quicker than someone who's not sensitive. They can read body language. They can read nonverbals. They can find ways to connect with other people because they're seeing things that are unspoken. So yes, there can be certain challenges that being sensitive creates, but there's also a ton of benefit when it comes to connecting with other people. So what causes somebody to be sensitive in the first place? Well, buck teeth, that can sure do it. I promise you that. There's an environmental factor that could be possible. Um, that is just because of how you grew up, where you grew up, the situation around you. And we would classify that as more of a nurture situation where it's external environmental factors that you're kind of part of that create levels of sensitivity. So for me, having these massive teeth, it made me self-conscious. It made me insecure. People would make comments so there's definitely embarrassment and causing me to smile without showing my teeth. You really got to develop a skill to be able to smile with your mouth closed and hide them things. But there's a large portion 
But being sensitive, that's not nurture. It's nature. There's around four genes that have been isolated and targeted as impacting people's level of sensitivity. And so there's a genetic component that's hereditary, that's that's passed down, that has nothing at all to do with the environmental factors, but more about these genes. So it's like a lot of things. It's a combination of nurture and nature. So I made a list of some of the things that come to mind that I've heard or hear that are thrown at sensitive people. And I'm sure you've heard these as well. You should grow thicker skin. Toughen up. You're just being dramatic. Side note, I hate that one. You're a bleeding heart. Don't take things so personally. It's really not that big of a deal. And so if you think about people who have a genetic disposition to being sensitive, then also environmental factors that cause them to be even further sensitive, these kind of statements are not very helpful. So in this episode, I wanted to talk about two different types of leaders, those that fall on the more sensitive end of the spectrum and those that fall more on the stoic end of the spectrum. So let's first start by defining each of these terms. I want you to think of a sensitive leader as someone that's more in tune with their emotions and most of the time showing those emotions versus a leader that's more stoic, that's are more hard to read. Sometimes you wonder whether they even have the capacity to feel any kind of emotion, let alone to show one. I recognize it's a very simplistic way to define each of these ends of the spectrum, but in a very general sense, that gives us an idea of what we're talking about. I've heard of different questionnaires and assessments to try and help people determine what kind of leader they are when it comes to sensitive versus stoic and and whatnot. And it's always somewhat amusing to me because sensitive leaders are so in tune with their own emotions and the environment around them, they already know they're sensitive. In fact, there's about 20% of the population that would be classified as highly sensitive persons. And if you are interested in, in understanding more about being a highly sensitive person, Dr. Elaine Aaron really was the pioneer for research and writings on highly sensitive people. She has studied this for decades and definitely would encourage you to pick up her resources if you or someone you know would be classified as a highly sensitive person. Like I said, it's about 15 to 20 percent of the population that this impacts. When I was doing some research on sensitive people, I did a quick search, and one of the first things that came up in an article or something talking about sensitive people was it defined sensitive people as a wilted flower. And that's kind of interesting because I'm sure a Stoic wrote that, first of all. But if you think about some of those statements I just went over, growing thicker skin, toughen up, bleeding heart, all of those statements are viewing sensitive people as if they are at a deficit. And one thing I would say to that is being sensitive is a huge superpower. Yes, it has its challenges, and we'll talk about some of those, but if you're a sensitive leader, you have an opportunity to connect empathically with your people. And sensitive people and and highly sensitive people They quickly pick up on the emotions of everyone in the room. They pick up on subtleties. They read nonverbal language extremely well. And that helps them navigate conversations. It helps them ask appropriate questions to pull more information out. Their BS meter is strong because they're understanding emotions and they're highly attuned to relationships and people. So a leader that's highly sensitive, trying to lead a team of people, of humans that have emotions, that sensitivity is huge and make people feel comfortable, helping draw out the best in other people. So being highly sensitive does not mean you are broken or a wilted flower. In fact, there were some profound leaders in history that 
would land on this sensitive end of the spectrum. I think one of the ones most written about and studied is Abraham Lincoln. I was born and I've always lived in Kentucky. And so Abraham Lincoln was a big part of school growing up. We were proud that the 16th president came from our state. I remember one story that had to do with mud. And there were some friends of his that were outside stomping in the mud, and he invited them into his house. He picked them up and held them upside down and then had them walk on the ceiling, leaving these muddy footprints all across the the cabin. Then when his parents got home, saw it, he laughed that it was a prank. I don't think they thought it was very funny, and they made him clean it up on the spot. But there's another story that has to do with mud that also sheds light on Abraham Lincoln being a bit more on the sensitive side of things. The story goes that he was traveling with some friends and in the distance he heard a noise and then upon further investigation, he finds a pig that's stuck in the mud. And so he wades out into this thick mud, picks up the pig and brings it back to safety and the pig apparently flings more mud all over Lincoln and the pig runs off. And then his friends were like, how would you do that? Now you're messy. We've got to go to this meeting. Lincoln says, I had to rescue the pig or I would never get that noise out of my head. So I feel like that's such a great picture of empathy, compassion, and sensitivity. And those are the same traits that when he became president that he utilized. He's known as the most empathic president, the most compassionate. During the Civil War, those traits led him to restoring our country and ultimately winning the Civil War. In the early stages of Lincoln's own autobiography, he was asked to write some words that would describe him. And the first word that he came up with was strange. And so whenever it went to the editors, they were confused by that. My assumption is that they couldn't reconcile such a strong, successful leader that would see themselves as being strange. And they actually added an R to the end of strange to transform it into stranger. But those who knew Lincoln the best recognize that he did see himself as strange. And for me, and I'm sure you, if you are sensitive, there's times where you felt like how you're perceiving the world around you, the things you were picking up on, the way certain things bother you, the way certain things cut maybe a little bit deeper for you. There are times where probably both are true. It feels strange and you also feel like a stranger. Some of the challenges that sensitive leaders face are very real. If you're not a sensitive leader, I'm sure there are some on your team. Statistically speaking, around 15 to 20% of your team would fall into this category. Sensitive leaders struggle with feedback. They struggle giving feedback because, again, they are in tune with other people's emotions. And so a sensitive leader is thinking about how their words are going to be received and what that's going to create in the other person. Sensitive leaders also struggle receiving feedback because they feel everything so deeply. You've probably had people on your team before that avoid feedback at all costs. It might be worth considering, are they doing that because they are a sensitive person? The temptation is to think they operate that way due to immaturity, which may be the case but they also may just be a sensitive leader. So what can a sensitive leader do? Because it's not like feedback can go away and there be any hope of a leader truly growing in their abilities. They're constantly going to be up against these things, so what can a sensitive leader do? One of the things that comes to mind for me as a next step is this. The sensitive leader is not going to all of a sudden become an insensitive leader. Remember, there's nurture components, there's nature components. It's, it's their wiring. 
they're not going to move very far, if at all, out of this. So if you yourself are a sensitive leader, I want you to continue taking things personal like you do. And that might sound like a shock because, especially with feedback, I hear a lot of leaders coaching other people, especially younger leaders or maybe more sensitive leaders of like, you've just got to quit taking things so personal. Again, that's probably not an option for a sensitive leader. And so instead, I want you to think about it this way. Walk into a conversation understanding that I'm definitely or I'm absolutely going to be taking this personally. So remind yourself of that. If you're a sensitive leader, I'm going into a conversation. Maybe I knew it was coming or maybe even if it catches you off guard, you have a rule for yourself of understanding, I'm probably going to take this personal. But, and the but in that statement is key, but instead of shutting down, which can absolutely happen to a sensitive leader, I want to operate differently. I like thinking about it as if it's a computer. There are certain times where the computer gets locked up I'm moving the mouse, I'm smashing the keyboard, and nothing's happening. The only thing I can do is hold the power button down and shut it all down. Other times, it might be running slow, it's just not running at its best. And the best thing I can do is not shut it down. It doesn't, it doesn't need that. It just needs a reboot. I need to go and click restart, let it do its thing, and then we're off running when it reboots. If you're a sensitive leader, I want you to actively choose restart instead of shut down. The worst thing you could do as a sensitive leader is to take things so personally, then your next move is to shut it all down. Because the feedback you're hearing is going to be crucial for you to continue to develop as a leader and as a person. And so as a sensitive leader, I don't want to make it known that huh, anytime I share honest feedback with Derek, he completely shuts down. And then you're training other people you work with that you can't handle honest feedback. And so then they're going to give you partial feedback or they're just going to avoid it at all costs. And then that is information that you need to level up your leadership. Understand you're definitely going to take it personal. But then the choice that you have, the crossroads that you're up against is choosing shutdown, or choosing reboot. And going for a reboot just means that was hard to hear. I'm going to allow that to reset the way I'm thinking about certain things, and I'm going to continue moving. And I'm going to take that information, do something with it, and allow that to change my choices moving forward. There's a lot of sensitive leaders out there. The stat I gave earlier, 15 to 20 percent, is just talking about highly sensitive people. But there's others that are sensitive that may not be highly sensitive, but they're definitely sensitive. The business needs your empathy. The business needs your understanding, your insights. And if you're a leader that's not sensitive, but you have some sensitive people on your team, how do you leverage that? Instead of trying to get them to change, how do you meet them where they're at, approach the challenges that it presents differently, and bring that superpower of understanding that they have to help you grow the business. The next episode we're going to talk about is for those that aren't sensitive, but they would maybe resonate more with being stoic. It's going to be about the other side of the spectrum as a leader. So to my sensitive leaders out there in the world, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, be strange, 